So we've already looked at how we can create a new project within ArcGIS Pro, load different types of base maps, be they Im imagery or topographic, and then use the navigational tools to zoom and pan around our data set. We then looked through the catalog pane at how we create feature classes and those feature classes sit within geodatabases. Now we can view a feature class as either a point, a line or a polygon and they're really just files that hold different types of features. So we can think of them as being like a candy jar filled with different types of candy for example. And so we created the polygon featured class called infrastructure. Now the idea here is that infrastructure may consist of green, gray or blue infrastructure. So the gray infrastructure being our buildings and car parks, etc. Then we've got our green infrastructure as, as our trees, shrubs and all those sorts of things. And then our blue infrastructure being any water features we have within the urban environment. So right here you can see the James Cook University Cairns Smithfield campus and you can see we have a number of different buildings and car parks and of course some beautiful tropical vegetation in there as well. So our task now is to digitize the different features that we see within this infrastructure feature class. Now to do this we are now going to go up to our edit tab and you'll see a new ribbon come up for that. Now what you can see here and the one that we're going to use to start with today is the create tool. So the create feature is going to allow us to do just that, create different features that are going to sit within this feature class. Now let's have a look at it. If I, if I tap on infrastructure here, you can see some different shapes appear and this is going to help me draw out the different shapes that I see within the James Cook University campus and I'm going to start with just digitizing the different buildings that we have and so the tool that I like best to do this to start with is just the polygon feature tool so if I click on that you can see that it's highlighted and you'll also see in the table of contents the infrastructure feature class is highlighted over here as well and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on each end of this particular building here and I'm going to double click to finish that polygon and now you'll see that I've completed that polygon it's now appearing in the color that matches what's in the table of contents here and you'll also see that it's highlighted in this cyan color so that's what we call selected so I'm going to go ahead and digitize a couple more buildings here as well so let's get this one in here and double click to finish that and now while I look at this I think you know maybe maybe pink isn't the best color for my buildings so really working with this idea that this is gray infrastructure perhaps I'd like to see it as a shade of gray so I can do that really quite easily so over in the table of contents here you'll see this color patch and even as I hover over it it says click to modify symbol so I can do just that if I click on it and we see all these different colors come up that I can I can potentially use to visualize my infrastructure feature class here. Now you can play with the properties here and select the color patch and choose any different color that you would like or choose one that's already been created within the gallery to match a particular feature within someone's classification. So actually perhaps I quite like this building footprint one that matches what I'm doing. So I'm going to click that one and you'll see that automatically it changes over here in the table of contents and the features that I have digitized within that feature class have changed as well. Now I can go ahead and continue to digitize individual buildings but what another thing that you might see is that some of these buildings kind of attach next to each other. So let's have a look at if I if I digitize the boundary of maybe this building here. And you can zoom in as you do this as well. So say that's one building and you'll see that there's another building that's, that's sort of attached to it as well or maybe it's another part of the building. If we actually want that to 
to attach nicely so we don't have any gaps between our polygons this tool here is quite a nice one to do as well so if we use this autocomplete tool I can you see as I hover over a corner of a building here um, I'm going to digitize around the edges of this building and I'm going to come inside this other one that I've already created and then I'll double click to finish that and you'll see that it just fills the gaps even though I drew in a much larger area it allows me to not have any overlapping polygons now this is really important because we don't want polygons to overlap each other and we also don't want them to have gaps between each other if they're supposed to supposed to be nested into each other as well so it's really important that we if we were to zoom in that we would see these polygons they sit nice and snugly together and they do share a border together as well so we're not missing any features as we do that now if you like you can also use this select tool so the select tool will allow me to click off that particular polygon that's already highlighted so if I tap somewhere else you'll see where the border is of that particular polygon but again it fits nicely in like a jigsaw so you can zoom and pan in around and that's going to help you navigate to your different areas and make it easier for you to, you to digitize as well now let's say that once we actually digitize these two buildings we decided that really they should just be the one building rather than being two separate ones so it's really quite easy to merge the two of those together so what we do I'm going to use my select tool here to draw out a box surrounding those two and you'll see that now both of those polygons are selected so they are highlighted in cyan now if we go up to the modify tool just up here and click on this you'll see that we've got a range of different options of how we might want to modify the features that we've just created now what I would like to do is to merge the two of those polygons together so I'm simply going to type in the search bar to merge and now click on that button there now it's telling me here that I'm working within the infrastructure feature class which is important and at the moment we've only got one feature class there anyway so we're not going to have any issues and I'm going to merge these two features that it's created so if I'm happy with that I'm going to click merge and we'll see that it's just removed the border between those two polygons that I previously had now conversely if you wanted to to go the other way so say you had created a polygon that you realized actually should have been multiple polygons you would use the split tool instead and so you can click on that and chop polygons in half or thirds or however it is that you would like so I'm going to do do that just now so say I'm going to draw a line here and say that's what I'm going to do there and you'll see that this now exists as two polygons if you're not happy with the edit that you just created you can simply go up to the undo tool just in the upper left here and if I tap on undo that's going to take me back to where I was and let's tap on undo again and that's back to the two individual features that I created in the first place so I'm going to go ahead now and continue to create different features within this feature class here and I'm going to use both the buildings and the car parks and the vegetation etc to completely fill up my feature class with all the different types of polygons that I have there in the next video we'll have a look at how we can name the different features that we've created so that will be putting them into different categories like buildings car parks trees etc and then we'll also be able to visualize them based on those categories or names that we give them too